century has taught the most appalling lesson of all, which is that very nearly a whole people may be reduced to ash, consumed utterly and scattered, along with everything that was holy to them, their prayer books and prayer shawls, their scrolls, their houses of worship. But on the day before Passover, it bears pointing out that song cannot be burned. Song, once sung, escapes and seems to hover above the earth until new singers come at last to call it down and to sing again. That is beginning to happen now, where an unspeakable smoke rose once. The cantor's song is rising. David Culhane reports our cover story this Sunday morning. <laughs> Once there was a great community of Jews living in Eastern Europe. Russia, Poland, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, Romania. The prayer and the poetry of their life was expressed in their music. Music swelled up to the sky. And then it stopped. And there was silence. First, it was fascism and the Holocaust. And then it was communism that tried to silence belief and the music. But at this time of extraordinary political change in Eastern Europe, the belief and the music of Judaism are returning to an area where they have often been unwelcome. A group of internationally renowned cantors have taken advantage of these developments to come back and sing the prayer and the poetry of their people. <laughs> David Bagley was thinking about all the changes taking place in Eastern Europe, and he wanted his song to be for that and for something more. A prayer for peace, not just for the Jews, but for all of humanity. Now, I offer this prayer, not necessarily because of changes that have taken place, 
but the inner peace that the human being should find in a surrounding that will be peaceful, hopefully will be peaceful. <laughs> Bagley and the other singers are touring with backing from a private foundation set up to foster the art of the cantor. This is a concert at a synagogue in Budapest. The appearance of the cantors in the Eastern European capitals also had political significance. The Hungarian prime minister was present at a reception for the singers in Budapest, a clear sign that communism and its hostility to religion are on the way out. The cantors then performed with the State Opera House Orchestra. This is the Nozick Synagogue in Warsaw, the only one the Nazis did not destroy. It is now the center for the few thousand Jews left here. The cantors from America, Canada, Israel came to sing the Sabbath service. Cameras were not allowed at the Orthodox ceremony, but the sound flooded out. synagogue that has survived the Holocaust in Warsaw, a city that at one time had a half million Jews. Moshe Schulhoff, the chief cantor at a synagogue in Los Angeles, led the service on Saturday morning in Warsaw. To, to tell these Jews in the synagogue, through my own way of singing, that what was is not destroyed. But it almost was destroyed. That dark truth informs every song, every prayer. It was Miss, Miss, uh, Miss Keeping that set outside this inspection, but actually this was the way you can get to the gas chamber. The cantors went to Majdanek concentration camp in Poland and offered a memorial service. Moshe Shulhoff sang the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I would never, never would have imagined that I will ever return to Poland. Isaac Goodfriend is the cantor at a synagogue in Atlanta. He was born in Poland and only survived the Holocaust by hiding with a Polish farmer. My mother and her children, my siblings, I had two sisters and two brothers, they were taken out into the forest outside of town, killed among 162 people, shot and buried alive. 
Isaac Goodfriend performed in Warsaw a few weeks ago when the Cantors gave their first concert at the National Philharmonic Hall. I expected that maybe one percent of the audience would be Jewish. I doubt if there was one percent of the audience there that they were Jewish. Poetry is there. Poetry survived all these years, all the, the, the uh, persecution. And uh, poetry can never die. It didn't kill the faith. They didn't kill the uh, feelings. They didn't kill the faith. They didn't kill the feelings. And that was most evident in the temples. This is the Dohanyi Synagogue in Budapest. David Bagley. What is happening in these concerts and these tours, my personal faith in the words of the prayers are being reaffirmed. The strength. But the words that dimmed are... are coming to life. What was it that the cantors brought back to these communities? They brought a sense of joy, of regeneration, of rebirth. Yes, yes, yes. 